I'm here with Marty Broder, the New Jersey Devils Executive Vice President of Business Development. He also played a little bit of hockey for them at one point, if you remember. Uh, Marty, first of all, uh, thanks for doing this, and uh, welcome to the 2019 draft. How excited are you for this? Oh, well, it's a, it's a big day for the Devils, so obviously we're uh, really excited to be here. Um, having the chance to pick uh, first overall doesn't happen too often. Got lucky in the, in the lottery, and... Uh, and uh, I'm sure the, uh, all the scouts and everybody's going to be uh, real happy to make our selection here soon. Excellent. Now, obviously, when you were a player, you were part of the, the greatest Devils teams there were. That was a very successful era. Now, a new culture is taking hold. Uh, some very exciting young players, uh, including Nico Heischer and obviously Taylor Hall, uh, who was very good for you. Um, what do you see right now in terms of this franchise and, and where it's headed? Well, you know, obviously, uh, I think that the tougher years are behind us. I think it, it took a while uh, when Ray came in um, to get rid of some of the contracts, some of the older players, and, and kind of revamp, uh, you know, with, with the, some of the draft picks he was able to uh, to, to get uh, with some of the trades that we made. And, and now we can see that it's paying off a little bit, even though we had an off year last year. Um, I think we've learned a lot about our, our young players, and we're really excited what we saw. Obviously, having the first pick overall, that's going to kind of help a little bit. And we're in position now that we'll we'll, we'll be uh, better every single year, and, and hopefully within you know a few years be be good contenders for the playoffs and then the Stanley Cup. When you look at what happened in the playoffs this season, there was so much chaos in terms of seeding and, and upsets. What does that tell you about the parity in the NHL and and what that might mean for a New Jersey squad that obviously wants to get back into that top eight in the East sooner than later? Well, I mean that's that's the beauty of this. I think you know the, the salary cap era kind of puts uh, puts a lot of team in the same uh, in, in, in the same stage, so it's going to be. Uh, it's important, you know, when you have to build through the draft and everything if you want to be successful. And you look at a lot of teams that do have some success in the playoffs or making the playoffs. Or, or a, lot, a lot of players are coming in from their own, uh, you know, minor leagues or, or from their draft. And uh, so these are important for the franchise. But obviously, you know, it's, it's about, you just got to get in the playoffs. And they showed this year, like, you never know what's going to happen when you, you, you get there. Now, something that I found really interesting is that, you know, when you were playing for the Devils under Lou Lamorello, it was very much a team concept. It wasn't really star-driven, and, you know, that was very successful. Um, but from a marketing point of view now, you know, we're in a different era, and you're going to have some marquee names in New Jersey. And I, I get the sense that on a, a corporate level that's being embraced that you really want peop the fans to know about these players um, is, is that kind of interesting for you seeing it from both perspectives yeah you know I, I, I played in that system you could call like get with, the, with uh, under Lou that everything was really kind of team first and nobody re was really above uh, but I've seen and I play with Team Canada. I've seen other other, other organization do differently, and uh, it's a different age now. Um, now I'm on that side, you know, like I can understand what the players want and need, and uh, you know, I think that's kind of one of the things that I'm able to help in, in my my new role. It's like to get to people to understand. Hey, there's there's ways of using our players to market our players. Um, you know, we have young players, and and they need to reach out to the community for them to be more present to help out. And um, I think by by kind of having me around and knowing what's the limit, because you know they their first job is playing hockey, and we need to understand that from these players. But they do have a responsibility towards um, you know the fans and and our organization to to be part of it too. Excellent. And speaking of your new role with the Devils. Uh, how are you enjoying being part of the organization in a, a very different way and being that that suit and tie guy, so to speak? Yeah, it's it's been good. It's it's uh, definitely a lot, lot less pressure than I'm used to. Uh, being in hockey operation with St. Louis for a while and, and played hockey all my life, this is kind of a, a nice uh, relaxing role a little bit. You still you still have a little bit of juices when when you go to the game, but you know when it's over, it's over. It's not like I have nothing to do with the hockey part. So 
Uh, but it's it's fun to be back in New Jersey. I left for four and a half years, and and uh, I just came back this year, and I uh, kind of just got all the see all the familiar faces, and that you know this is this is where I belong. Now, because we are at the draft, let's let's go back in time to to your draft year. What do you remember about that experience? Well, I was uh, nerve wracking a little bit. You know, I flew in with my dad, uh, with my agent, and. Uh, you know, I was ranked 30th overall, second goalie uh, uh, behind Trevor Kidd, and um, uh, I was the second goalie, but I got drafted 20th overall. So that kind of was a shock, a little surprise. Got in the first round, and it was exciting. Uh, wasn't really sure where New Jersey was at the time, <laughs> but uh, it was. Uh, it's such a, a great event, and, and you know, it's funny. You're all excited, and you understand when you start going to training camp. Well. You know, you're just a number, you know, and and you got to make that number count, and and that's kind of the attitude that I had when I started in in, in the minors and play, went back to junior. I got I got to be relevant here. Yeah, yes, I'm a first round pick, yeah, but you know, you still got to show that that you you belong there. So it's been uh, it was a, it was a fun process to go through, a little bit nerve wracking, but at the end of the day, for all these young guys that are going through the draft. It's not the end of the world what number you're getting picked. It's it's how you get to the NHL. But obviously this is a dream come true, and, and a lot of work was is put in to these to these kids. And then uh, just to hear their names, uh, it's pretty special time. Indeed. And another really special draft moment was when you got to make the announcement that the New Jersey Devils were drafting your son. Um, take me through how that all came together. Uh, I was just sitting in the box, and uh, you know, Lou called me up, and he said, "Hey, listen, you know, come, come down. I just, I gotta talk to you. Come to the table." And so I came down, and he says, "Well, we're gonna draft Anthony. So, do you, would you like to announce his name?" And so I kind of sat there for about, I don't know, 15 minutes before 15, 20 minutes, and I was like, "How am I gonna do this? I've never, you know." So I kind of announced uh, Anthony's uh, pick. So it was, it was a lot of fun, and you know, it's great just to see him come down and see you know our family going kind of crazy a little bit and came over and like just give me a big hug it was it was kind of funny like uh, the whole thing was was pretty pretty cool 